Hi everybody. Okay, so I'm working on uh, making my studio more efficient um, so I can be more productive and work faster in cold wax medium and oil. And one of the things that keeps me from using cold wax medium and oil sometimes is the fact that it takes a long time to set it up. It takes uh, a while to, to, to do the cleanup. And then there's the storage issue, like what if you have leftover paint, like a lot of it, and you don't uh, want to put it all onto a slop board, you wanna save it for the next day or maybe the next week. And you've got several different palettes you're working in. So um, I happen to have a lot of colors, oil colors, um, oil paints in my studio that I've never even opened the boxes of because um, back before COVID, I was uh, sponsored by Gamblin Paints and they gave me, uh, I was able to, you know, acquire quite a selection of oil paints and colors. I, I you know, was quite well stocked, but I didn't have the time to really do the experimentation that I wanted uh, because I've been teaching so much, but now I'm at the point where it's time for me to break open these boxes and use these oil paints and I want to be really efficient. So one thing is that, well, I love this palette paper. It's gray. Um, it's made by Jack Richardson and, you know, there are about 30 sheets in here, I think, of 16 by 20, but it's expensive. I mean, $25 for this pad. And um, so what I decided that I'm going to do, uh, the first thing I'm going to do right now is use this roll of freezer paper that I got at Costco and it's, it's um, laying down right now. And what I decided was that instead of 16 by 20, I'm going to cut 14 by 18 because this is 18 inches wide and I'm just going to cut it in 14 inch uh, sections. So here's my mighty board. This is 14 inches and I'm trying to um, cut the full width of the freezer paper, which is 18 inches this way by 14 inches this way. And the reason I want them to all be 14 inches is because the other part of becoming efficient and productive and you know working faster in my studio is that I have a small dorm refrigerator that the width of it is 15 inches. So if at the end of the day I've got palette paper that has gobs of paint on it, all I have to do is cover it with saran wrap and roll it up and store it in my refrigerator and then I'll be able to use it the next time I paint. So instead of using this expensive gray palette paper, I just got this roll of freezer paper and I just insert this in here. This keeps my, uh, my width at 14 so I know that it's going to fit inside of my refrigerator and I keep folding it. So I'm unrolling it here and then fold it here like this and then I just keep creasing it. I've been doing this now for a while and I thought to myself, well, maybe I should record what I'm doing because somebody else may want to do the same thing. So I'm essentially making my own palette paper. Freezer paper works really, really well because the cold wax and oil, you know, they don't seep through it. And recently I covered my, um, this, this cutting mat with uh, freezer paper. I was able to mix a lot of cold wax medium with gelfin gel and store it in three large containers and now they're in the refrigerator. So I'll show you that in a second. But this is all part of my process for um, really studying color. I guess that's the, the base of this whole thing is that I'm trying to learn so much more about color. And uh, part of that is I have to become, you know, have a system that works really, really well. So now I've folded over, gosh, at least maybe 20 of these sheets and it hasn't taken me that long and it certainly hasn't, will not cost me $25 um, to, for like this pad of paper. So what I'll do is just cut this off and separate it from the roll. And it doesn't have to be exact or anything, but I just figured that having like a template made from that plastic or you could use wood, you could use cardboard, but you just don't have to keep measuring with a ruler. So that's a time saver right there. Now that I've got this, you can see that it's been folded over many, many times, right? And I've got it creased on this side and I've got it creased on this side. Now what I'm going to do is just lay it down and I'm going to um, cut open. Well, let me just flatten this out first. So I measured the width of my little refrigerator. It's a dorm refrigerator that was very inexpensive. And you can also get them used. You, know, you can get a little bit larger one used at like 
Habitat for Humanity. I used to have a used one at the Grange, which was more of a full-size refrigerator, but in my studio, I don't have that kind of space. I didn't want one that large, but I did want a dedicated refrigerator for my, just for my oil paints. Nothing else will be in it. So now what I'm gonna do is just slice down the creased size of the freezer paper with a sharp blade. Okay, so now there's that. I'm gonna throw this away. So that's one half that's been sliced. Now I've got the other three side, so I'm gonna just do that as well. I've got this um, grid uh, on my surface here, my cutting surface, which is a uh, self-healing mat, which I really like. It's really large and I use it all the time. So I do all my cutting. I can line up everything so it's really straight. Okay. Same on this side. Okay, so that didn't take very long at all. Now, what I have are single sheets of freezer paper. And let's see, here's the plastic that I had in the in insert on the, it's like my template. But now you see, I've got all these sheets that are cut. And it's about probably 15 to 20 sheets. They're a little bit smaller now than what the gray palette paper was, but as you can see, it's just freezer paper and it's so much less expensive. So I'm gonna keep cutting those, you know, kind of, I can do that any, any time <clears throat> that I have extra time. So another thing that I have been working on is, um, because I, I love to work with cold wax and oil on arch soil paper, I do have like lots of 22 by 30 inch sheets. And what I've done here is I've got my measurement for making four squares. So what I did was I cut, I'm just trying to like, uh, get things done ahead of time. So I've got like all these sheets now That are the right size to make a four square I haven't put the tape on the middle or the center or around the edges But when I do after I'm done It's going to look like this one has the tape around, you know You can see it just by the way that it's kind of shiny. I think you can see that but um, taped on the center here and then around all the edges and so I've marked the center line and this line. All I have to do is put my tape over that. I can be doing that when I'm watching TV. So I've got like several sheets here and I'll just keep cutting a lot of those. Uh, what I decided about the swatches with color is that, well, they're really nice. But to really get a feel for like what a certain uh, limited palette, like what, what are all the possibilities on a painting? Um, you can do a swatch like this, and I've shown you that in, in ASM and um, PDPC. You know, that's great. Um, but, and, and I think that works for me pretty well. But then I was thinking, you know, there's nothing like actually doing a four square painting, a uh, group of paintings that really help you evaluate, like, what is the color really going to do for me in an actual painting? There's just such a difference between paintings that are, say, five by seven versus this little swatch, you know? and I'm still debating whether I want to, I mean, I'm gonna continue to swatch for sure, but I'm also considering just um, making a four square for a palette and just use that as my example. And you know, what you can do is just take the photo of one of these and print it out and then you've got, you, because you might, you know, you might create paintings that you like and want to sell or whatever. That way you can, you can hang on to the one, just one example of the palette. And so I'm kind of considering that it's another way to do an actual five by seven painting, I guess. And so anyways, that, I just want to share that with you. Those are some of the things I'm doing right now to make myself more efficient and productive, um, make cleanup faster, um, save money on the palette paper. And I had an idea to store my oil paints and pre-mixed cold wax medium and Galka gel in larger quantities so that you know, um, I can make the most out of my 10 minutes if I only have 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And I have so many oil colors that I want to try in different combinations. And sometimes I don't need much, you know, to do a swatch, a quick swatch. I just need a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, a little bit like a teaspoon of each color, right, to do a swatch. 
So my idea was uh, I need to be able to pre-mix these oil colors with the cold wax medium mixed with Galkid gel and have them last for a very, very long time. So I called Gamblin and they did tell me that you can refrigerate oils. In fact, oils kind of like the cold and the same with the Galkid gel, it will last basically forever in a refrigerator. So I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you my latest idea to try and make myself more efficient with cold wax medium and oil. Yep. Here are the pets, and there's Frida. Hi, Frida. And there's Pablo. There's Vincent sleeping with Kitty. So with all of the pets in my studio, here's my solution to make myself more efficient, be able to make the most of 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever amount of time I have. Um, I got this brand, it's Igloo, made in the US, and it's very tiny. This is like a dorm size refrigerator, and at the Grange I had more of an almost full-size refrigerator freezer. I don't need the freezer, but this is what I've done, um, and I've made um, like larger quantities of cold wax mixed with my G-Gel 3 to 1. I've got three of these containers, so there's one, two, three, and these will last a long, long time. I uh, Of the, the colors that I might use a lot, like this is my quick dry white uh, large container. This is almost filled to the top. And it's all pre-mixed with cold wax medium mixed with G-Gel in the right proportion, you know, like that almost one to one. And so if I ever need it, it's already pre-mixed. And the same with my ivory blacks. I, I obviously always use white and black on my palette. And then I just, uh, warm white is another color that I like to use. Now this is my palette left over from yesterday, and I just want to show you how nice this was, because all I had to do is refrigerate it, and inside are my, my palette was three colors, and I'm just doing some swatches with it, and I moved the leftover paint onto a little piece of the uh, plastic, the magic plastic that I, or Mighty Board that I like to use, but that's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be on that, it could be anything. And then I will have leftover palette paper that I just showed you with the freezer paper. And due to the width of this refrigerator, it's 15 inches wide. And I cut the freezer paper uh, so that it's no wider than this. So if I roll it up, I can store it, you know, like on top of this palette, on top of this tray if I wanted to, or just on the shelf. I also have like all this door space. I could probably slip my palette right into here just by rolling it up. So while I do have it on these cards in this tray, which I'll take out right now, I'm going to now move these colors back onto my palette and start painting. Here I'm showing you some tins that are smaller and these are for storing any colors that I would like to use more frequently. A lot of them are glazing colors. And so I'm mixing these up in smaller quantities and they're being mixed with the cold wax and G gel ahead of time. So by storing these in the fridge, um, I can pull any colors out at any time and you know do a quick swatch, uh, see what kind of colors I like to put together and get to work. And it's, it's a real time saver. And if you have leftover paint as well, I can add them to any one of these tins as long as the paint is still clean. And then tip number four is how to store the metal trash can lid. It's been driving me crazy how um, you have that metal trash can lid. It's, it needs to usually lean up against something and I didn't want to have it on my floor because I value my floor space. So this is what I came up with. I got an Irwin clamp. You can get it at any uh, hardware store and I just clamped the handle and then you have that attached to the side of your metal trash can and it just holds it in place. And I found that, wow, it's not on my floor anymore. And at the end of the day, I just pull it out and, you know, close the can. And so it was an easy solution. So I thought I would share that with you. And finally, tip number five. Here I'm using a soap dish to hold my offset palette knives. I've often shared that my favorite type of palette knife to use is the offset palette knife because it's got that kink. And, and then when you lay it down on your palette, the wood handle is heavier and the blade then will not, you know, if it's full of paint, it'll just stay off your palette. Well, I found that a soap dish uh, is perfect for storing several palette knives um, just to get them out of your way and they hold the paint. And so, yeah, that would be my final tip. And hopefully I will share more tips with you um, soon if I come up with any. Thanks everyone. Bye now.